This is Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we discuss the biggest entertainment stories and have lifestyle conversations. My name is Elsie Goldry, and I've got my trusting co anchors with me, Ife Omai and Ife Oluwa Oshunkaye. Hello. It's not very. How are you doing? You can't add you very. She's happy, man. <laughs> She's sure. happy already. Always. She was just burning up behind the scene. <laughs> I was passionate, well, is it different? Mm. Okay. Are you done? No, absolutely. Please. Okay, cool. Ghanaian actor Van Vika has called on his colleagues, um, Gollywood actors, to support crew members during the lockdown period since most of them are home and finding life a bit difficult. In a post he shared via Instagram, he referenced Bollywood actor Salman Khan, noting how he extends financial help to 25,000 daily wage workers of Bollywood film industry. He said, and I quote, um, some of the crew members, producers and directors inclusive, are struggling during this difficult times we need to ensure that they too survive this pandemic for we need them when it's all over end of quote he went on to say let's join forces to help our brothers and sisters in the film industry as well as continue with other benevolent activities end of quote they need to change their name from gollywood to something else because sounds gullible, sound, right? yeah it sounds horrible anyway well, I, I don't think I, they will change that because that conversation happened like oh huh? wow no, nothing. Uh, can you say, say the same thing about Nigeria? Yes, Nigeria is not that bad. Mm. Ghana is not that bad. I was just joking. If you're comparing, mm. let's, let's let's not compare. I, mean, I think let's. we have better, more, <laughs> a let's lot more better. No, let's let's yeah. the you started it. You did. No, I didn't. Mm -mm. I only said the movies are quite gullible, and you said Nigeria too. So she started it. No, you started it. I. I Okay, okay, I started it. <laughs> Can we continue? <laughs> I pointed out the fact. Um, yeah, oh, wow. it's it's something that should be said. We've been waiting for Africa to kind of make that type of move where we are really helping, you know, especially with our celebrities and everything. Um, on that scale, I don't know if it's because we also just have issues on our own and not, oh, we're just really stingy. I don't know. The way things are oh, looking. Oh, we're just poor like, and forming online. You know? The way mean, things that's, are looking is like everybody doesn't have money. So either that is true or what, just some people are just really good liars and are being stingy. Either of those two things are quite sad, if you ask me. So I've been waiting for Nigeria to do something. I feel like we have in different ways. Like even before COVID-19, I've seen the music and entertainment industry come together but maybe not i know that in nigeria we have um a lot of um scholarships and things that are going on right now i sent it to a bunch of friends in the office that are into film and everything where they're sponsoring filmmakers if you send a story and then they can give you stipends i think it's 25k or something don't want to say it's little because right now that's more than enough for a lot of people so I know that there's a lot of private in, um, um, initiatives going on right now. Maybe it's not on a large scale like Lady Gaga's, but I know people are doing things for the industry. And I, I, unfortunately, I don't know what's happening in Ghana, but if, if someone is listening to him and can help, I, I feel like it should take um, his, his advice. These crew members don't even earn a lot to start with. And secondly, they earn on a daily basis. Like, it's when they work on sets that they get paid. They get paid by the hour, sometimes by how long you work for. So a lot of them are usually out of jobs when they're not shooting a movie. So imagine how difficult this period is. Because a lot of them even scout. Some of them even do freelance and hope that the director or the executive producer will be kind enough to say, oh... You can have this for, for being here. You get that kind of thing. And right now, they don't have that. So I think everyone, it's not just in Ghana. Let's just call for everyone across the globe. Like people that work by the hour, people that work, that make a living and they live by what they make in a day should be attended to one way or the other. If their bodies that can be organized in this pandemic period, then I think it should but be. But then done. again, isn't it that he, the, the lockdown is over so they should be getting their, their jobs back? Or? Yeah, but they will be, but um, it can be compared to somebody with a salary and a who, I guess so. Yeah. But for this story, um, um, it somehow doesn't sit well with me, especially um, with the idea that actors and um, largely better than um, the f crew members. So I'm not saying that cannot be the situation. It can. But when the pay disparity is extremely much and then you're talking about them not even being paid and having been on freelance so we've seen um um what's it called movies that gross a lot of money and you say this is the biggest movie or in the cinema at the moment is making a lot of money it would be painful for me to know that there is a crew member on that 
kind of movie that did not pay at least his money's worth and cannot at least ha get a living from that so i think the conversation as well just needs to go back to the roots for them to understand how do they treat the people that make it's them look to. good in front of the camera yeah thank you the structuring because i know we're having a conversation regarding um the kind of contract actors sign actually when it comes to how they earn from their um the movies they appear in being aired in other places and everywhere that's a conversation going on but is anybody really advocating for the crew members because we've also had a conversation on this table where we were talking about the amount writers are paid to give to write the stories and um i think that came up when we're talking about the quality of the storytelling because we've gotten better with cinematography we can say we've gotten better with directing and a whole lot even editing but when it comes to the story it's it's usually where the problem is because I, I don't think a film can be better than the story and then we'll now go back to okay how much are the people being paid to get them to dedicate themselves to research and you realize that it's probably just one person writing a whole film you expect the person to research to get the figures right to get the angles right and you're paying the person how much two hundred thousand four hundred thousand it doesn't make sense so i think after all this i like what he's saying but Did i think two hundred thousand for equipment for oh for the writer yeah oh, okay. so i i think they so need to go back member, to like, what we all need to go back to the drawing board to understand well in the, i think so. in the industry it's also about names hey because you have to put into consideration <clears throat> that there are some actors that don't get anything Mm -hmm. Well, it, it's all about names. I've, I've, I've worked with movies where the people that I saw, the, the writers and everything, were getting mad money. And I think it's because the name that's behind them. Mm. And I think that's not, not a Nigerian problem. That's like a global thing. So there's that as well in the industry that you have to kind of like work your way to having like a more tangible name. Maybe we can start to implement protections for the lower, for the lower, um, uh, roles um, maybe involve like things like maybe uh, minimum wage for people so that there's not like serious exploitation but I think there'll always be that disparity in payments because first of all there's negotiation involved so it's how you present yourself and what you say you can offer and then there's also the experience and pristine that comes through it and then also the budget like there's levels to the movies and stuff like it would be different if you wrote a series that's ongoing for many years if you wrote a movie or short film and then also who's writing it so there's it is kind of like um a complicated facet but yeah, they can is. still the conversation I mean, about minimum think. wage have come up a couple of times and they say they are looking into it because the main thing is to structure the 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 um, industry so if i know that the minimum i can get paid to write a a short film for example is hundred thousand naira. then it is when that's for example I don't know. So that it, it, that gets to the point where your brand now speaks for you to be able to say, you know what, I don't do hundred thousand, I do one millionaire. But do they have that minimum wage that doesn't feel like you are slapping a person's talent on their face? Because that's how I feel sometimes when I hear conversations or things that happen behind the scene to create a movie, a movie that even ends up making a lot of money. So I, I exactly. think that's the producers and the directors, actually the producers, should be humane enough to pay people what they are worth. Yeah, that's why I think um, there should also be um, a standard of renegotiation when post COVID nineteen, mm. in the sense that um, if you see movies crossing a lot, um, you shouldn't. There should be structure, basically. It can it, that would it be, would work. That would Just the same way work. we have royalties, royalties, right? In music, I think that's the same way it should be in movies, like. As long as the movie keeps making money, then I should keep making for money. For crew members, I'm not sure, except you no, are an investor in the now. movie. I'm of course, yeah, that conversation is ongoing. I think, yeah. I think they right. should also look yeah. into that. Okay, um, moving on. Hollywood actor Ansel Eglot. Elgot goes on cloud to raise fund for coronavirus relief funds. He posted a photo of himself standing naked in the shower along with the caption only fan link in bio in reference to the video subscription site. But instead of a link to an only fans page, his Instagram bio contained a link to a GoFundMe page raising money for food for Brooklyn healthcare workers. I have a serious problem with this story and you know why? why? Even the way we are reporting and we say um, actor tricks fans right mm -hmm. if this was a lady shameless goes on cloud for mm -hmm. money do you understand i that think, I think someone has done this before it's not exactly like this but a lady um 
she went naked to get m money for a certain people. She raised a lot of money actually, yeah, no, and she wasn't she wasn't dragged in that light. You know, this it's this is a he's jumping on a very old trend. Mm -hmm. um, it started with an Australian porn star on Twitter mm. that came and said. Um, What's it called? I will send you nudes or whatever. Yeah, I think send that's you the one nudes I'm if you send me about. Yeah. No, five dollars. And she raised lot. something, something, something million Millions. dollars. Yeah. And there was no um um, um cried in it. I, I do like that he a male is kind of jumping on the trend. Yes, because you, it, I think it just shows that men can also be sexualized and be objectified and all that type of stuff. I'm and not saying that, about that. I'm not happy about that. I'm just saying that it's, it's nice to have that um, balance. Balance, yes. Um, I'm not happy when a girl does. I'm not happy when it's not. That doesn't cause me happiness. But <laughs> <laughs> but it's nice that you know there, there is that conversation that's happening when a man involves himself freely like that to say okay. Um, I I really do like him. He's he's. Um, an amazing actor. I liked him from Baby Driver. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think the Fault in Our Stars. Stars. Oh my gosh. Amazing, I've not seen it. But I would say that my, my issue with, with that is that his audience is so young. Um, and I just felt that. Yeah, I don't know. It was just a bit like. No, not much just so young. We like him. So he, yeah, no, he's, but he's but the biggest diversity. audience. But no, no, they, they, they were going that. to pay to see the body Abby, because if you do not go to that link to click to to go to the only fan page right. you but would you, you would know what they, was they were tempted especially if they're so she? young and they're juvenile oh, wow i don't know <laughs> yeah i mean if, they, if, if he gets his money i really don't mind and it's, i would like to know what this made cost. yeah we have to follow the story to scarn you know give a head food feedback of how much he earned he, and if yeah. that click bit was worth it i wish it wasn't i don't think that the that the um the packaging was done right because usually clickbait is that you click on it and then it mm, for you yeah, to not because a lot of people would just see the picture and, and just move back. forward like already gotten everything i want to get mm. let's say it was a video now i was about to just turn so we can't see everything and then there's now the click on this thing to see more and it takes you there maybe that'll be like a lot more or maybe fun, he could take it a lot further but they would probably slap him with a lawsuit so you you create something that looks like what you said in the website right and then click to subscribe your money has gone <laughs> and then when mm. the money goes we all see they say thank you so for much helping the for doing it. but the most important thing is um the purpose of which yeah. he's doing this mm. which is for a good cause so um kudos to him for doing that should we talk mm. about the picture though because mm. what do you want to talk about i don't know i just felt uh, I, I think it's a bit maybe you guys uh, rated so let me know it's let me not um, there's no way to anyone. underrate yeah. it, it. Mm. Uh, well you know i don't know if you saw the picture the way his hands were posing and mm -hmm. everything mm -hmm. i felt like there was like nothing there Right, Tea time on. returns after this break. <laughs> Welcome to Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories and, of course, analyze them for you. You can have both parents and still end up as a useless child at the scene every day. <laughs> <laughs> Most times, I worry more about where I'm coming from mm -hmm. and where I am now, wow. and that determines my next step. Why are you sounding like an Alibaba? Alibaba. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Plus TV Africa, we're feeling good. No time to dull, everybody feeling alright. Still make music and people are still buying. That was how they look myself, minimal are you? Mm. Mm. music is for mature minded people. I got DM sometimes from Malawi, like, what? <laughs> 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 Jennifer Lopez um, has been slapped with $150,000 lawsuit over unauthorized photo. A photographer by the name Steve Sands has accused the singer of copyright infringement and profiting from his work by using his photo to promote her brand on Instagram, where she has over 118 million followers mm. without permission. But this picture is from 2017. I just think COVID is doing a lot. It's not like the case has been ongoing. There's a new lawsuit. So mm. it's really crazy that um, a picture posted in 20... Haven't you been seeing it all this while? Why are you coming out now? You just realized. Uh, well. When you checked his account, I was like, my guy, ah, things are tough. Let me look for celebrities Ooh, using we? my pictures. Mm -hmm. And he just found Jennifer Lopez. Still, and, though, no matter what his reasons are, I'm, I'm still going to say the same thing we said when we were talking about Ariana Grande and mm. a lot of other people who have been on this table. You have a lot of following. You get currents. You know that your following and your likes are currency. You know that social media is a business. Not, for you, not just for you, but for mm. hunger mongers. 
I don't know why you're still uploading pictures that are not, um, you know, verified or like are not from the source and everything. I think sometimes. She knew. I, I think mean, sometimes they don't know that it's for a, a person that would actually. Nah, you know, sue because them. the way pictures yeah. work. Remember, we talked about this thing. Especially when, when you are in a structured fans? economy and you they, know the they law. They know True. because they get their pictures from photographers. That's what usually happens. If not, they take the pictures themselves. So pictures that are of you in the walkway, whatever. A lot of them actually buy them. So you buy them from Getty or you buy them from this person or the photographer and you are friends and candid and then the person sends you those pictures and then you you cannot tell me that Jennifer Lopez doesn't have a team of people that I are check. that are checking the posts and everything so she clearly did not do that or if she did she knew that or the team knew that they hadn't got, um, got um, but, been given a, a right to, to post but to that. be fair it wasn't that rampant as that 2017 I think on um, this trend of um photographers coming up to say that oh you use my picture without permission started a lot in like mm. 2018 2019 2020 yeah i get what you're saying yeah, but when it's so happened to one person you, you go back yeah. and take you know down it's time to go back and sit your team down please when did i take this picture yeah. did you take it if not delete you know and, and, to avoid oh, things like and this. also i think it's because there's money involved that people start to like take um, make the photographers look like they're, they're kind of like in a bad light because these are the these are the only way they make money. Let's be real. Like we always defend mm. people on this table when their their jobs are not, are not being valued or things like that. If I'm a photographer in America and that is one of the major ways I've I've worked, these people have to sometimes leave their homes and be in subways for five hours to Just get one picture and blah blah blah. They've, he's doing the right thing by by. Um, you know, doing his job and taking good pictures or whatever. I don't think anyone should have the right, especially if that's how it works in that system. Or mm. It doesn't work like that here because we don't even have paparazzi anyway. Um, we so don't have a word? Paparazzi. We don't oh, have okay. people who are like, mm -hmm. that's your job to go follow people. Usually, Nigerians are citizens of our paparazzi. Citizens who take the picture <laughs> and then go and post it and then she well, grab it from Google and put <laughs> it in here. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't work like that. So I feel like after every, everything has been said and done, they have to have, and I think that's how this, this, this um, trend actually started. So what will happen is that decent people who come out to say, oh, I've really been taken advantage of and this person didn't pay me. And then every photographer is now hungry. Mom Which is why I liked what, what Ariana Grande world, did the, okay. yeah. when she said, you know what, you can't take my pictures. Because yeah. as I, I get this is the way they mm -hmm. make their income and all that. But still, I've always said this on this table, I don't understand that law of me being the one in the photo, but you own the photo. I mean, it's, it is the same it's thing here. Yeah. It's, it's a global thing. Like, just that the way our, our, our judicial um, system works, when you think of your stress of going to the court and all that, you just have your conversations with the person and let it go. But it actually applies here as well. If a photographer wants to take it up, they take it up. But what I do in that case is, if you're going to take a picture of me and then you send all those your contracts, we have to renegotiate to say, please, I'm using my picture wherever I want to. And we mm. agree before you even start taking the picture to avoid stories that hurt. But like you said, I think she has her team. She needs to sit down and do the right thing. And of course, this will, it usually ends in out of court settlements. Yeah. They will, they will Guess settle what? it the somehow. Law, the, the law also applies in this part of the world yeah. but guess what the photographer will probably write you baba you don't give me photo credits I say, <laughs> they, they're not even going to think about them the, yeah you don't even give enough. me that's all they need like just let my name trend for a while but mm -hmm. you know this this sanders guy i think this is not his first celebrity um photo he's been taking a lot of pictures so i think it's well known to an extent so i think there's levels to it as well to the people that think oh i have the bragging right to go some of them don't even have companies that are registered to start with. So how are you going to sue in the first place? Yeah, but this person clearly but has this person that. clearly has that. So it, it's it's also think that good. they have a relationship. It's also like, good that I'm hoping he went to her back behind the scenes to say, "Oh, Jen, like I, I don't know how this works because if he's taking a lot of um, pictures for celebrities, couldn't you just address the person to say uh, address Jennifer to say, "Oh, listen, or Jay, or whatever he wants to call her." You have my pictures and everything, rather than go just going straight. It's possible to he's court. done that and he wasn't taken serious. Or so. maybe he didn't get a yeah. response. Mm. Okay, okay. Um, <laughs> um, Nigerians remember that green after ten years. Mm. Somebody was passionate about this. Yeah, so I was yeah. reading this this morning, um, <laughs> the article written by she Tony. Cried. And I, I had to run upstairs because I just finished in my makeup. And I'm like, hey, makeup artist, please help me wipe the tears because I was. It was so emotional for me to. To read all that, anyone who knows me will know a fair Christ for everything. So maybe don't take it too personally. But <clears throat> this story first hit me because I don't think I have revisited it. I, I have revisited it as an adult. Um, when it happened, I was still very young. One. Secondly, I think it was the first time I was kind of like acknowledging that he was only twenty-three. 
when he died. And I think, like I said, because I'm an adult, it's beginning to hear for me what 23 means and be gone at that short period of time. Um, the article that I read that was getting me all emotional had he get, basically gave his recounts, and um, it was interesting to just see how he was such a like. I don't know, like the, he was like a Tupac. We haven't really had that. Even Olamide that sings indigenously does not have that vibe to him. Olamide pays him respect too. Yeah. yeah. And there's something about that green that I don't think we've had before and after him where he kind of was always level-headed. Like the, 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 the person that was recounting that his, his death said something about how he went to look for his apartment and everything and he had moved from his shack, but he still moved to another, like, Another shack, but he just made a nice house in that place. So he was somebody that wanted to stay grounded, stay with the roots. And mm -hmm. like, he didn't move to phase one or, you know, like he didn't get disconnected from that. And I really respected that. It was also very creepy. I mean, it was creepy then, it's still creepy now to see that he um, then sang a song about his death and some people should not cry for him. Almost like he knew. And there was a cleanliness in his, in his rap. Like yeah. he wasn't filled with the kind of, I mean, now they make you feel like if you're rapping indigenous, it has to be really vulgar yeah. and rough and dirty. But he was, he was, like you said, he was grounded yeah. and level-headed. So. What, what I would say to this story, the way from the tears and the emotion, is that I was honestly kind of surprised that they didn't do anything for him to mark this 10 years. Um, it was a, yeah, I, Well, no, but usually you don't, you can't do that the day before. Like, you have to have started planning these things. And it's 2020. Things are even a lot more harder. Like, no one... if And I feel like if they were doing anything in the process or had any idea, but I found out on social media. So they had a song called My Pain that had... It was like seven minutes long and all the stars were in there. That it was, was when he died. Yes, mm -hmm. and I, I went to all of them's pages. A lot of names, I, I, I was like, wow, okay, this person like Dorella... Um, Shade, uh, RSK. I went to almost everyone's Instagram. Not one thing everything. about a 10 year thing. And you were in that video saying your heart, your soul, your body, your mind. Like, ah, I don't know. Because well, I feel like for 10 me, years is a for big me, man. I think it's a celebration of life for me because um, at the end of the day, he paved the, the way for a lot of indigenous rappers. Now we have people like Olami Day. We have them. Um, what are the other indigenous rappers? We have Zlatan. We have Naira Mali. We have a lot of people rapping in Yoruba. So I think um, it's, it was like the messiah of um, indigenous rap in Nigeria. And for that, I think we should be grateful and celebrate his life in this 10 years. So I agree with what you're saying. I hope um, they will do something post COVID-19 about um, his 10 years anniversary, but you know, I hope I just so, because I think they usually have. It's, mm. it's, it's not necessarily a very big event, but they usually have um, clusters no, of I just events, want to use even this. when it wasn't 10 years. So, I just want to use like, even if it's a remake happening. of that video, because I know oh, that, because okay. uh, I know that that video, um, Sasha P and YQ, who were really close to him, couldn't even process the thing enough to beyond that he released an article about coming out for the first time this is 10 years after saying he's still not over it and everything like there are people who are really close to him yeah like why was the one who came out to talk about the least um yeah, the, the decade yeah, and that yeah, he wasn't yeah, there so yeah. i think that that would be definitely one of the people that would do something yeah but if no, call, i just want to remember they to come out and like um, his songs what's your favorite that green song i don't know titles of songs sorry no pom, like, pom, pom, okay. for sure. <laughs> That song was well, ringing in my head. I even, 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 um, the song with YJ, I really like that one. I don't know. Okay, you know they say we need to wrap up. Okay, wrap up. That's how we wrap up this episode of Tea Time. Thank you for watching. Join the conversation on social media with the hashtag Tea Time or Twitter, Tosa Plus TV Africa. You can catch up on this episode and all our exclusive content by subscribing to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa. Do also watch Tea Time on Auto TV and in London on Ben Television. My thank you as always. You go to my co anchors, Ife Omai and Ife Oluwa Shunkaye and the entire production team. Thank you for watching Plus TV Africa's Tea Time. My name is Elsie Godwin. Do stay home and stay safe. Thank you.